First things first, I usually take the cylinder head off the engines first, but in order to take that cylinder head off, I gotta remove the rocker arms and get the push rods out of the way so I can get the two bolts that are down in there. Yeah, there's four all together holding it on. And so to remove these rocker arms, usually people would uh, loosen up these bolts right there and uh, put slack on the push rods and put it out that way. But I have a better way. I just, oops, sorry. I just rotate the engine so the piston is at the bottom of the cylinder, and then I use my thumb to press down, and poof, there goes your first push rod. Same thing with the other one. You just push down, compressing the spring. This one's harder though. And there you go. There's your other push rod. And there's pins in here which are holding the rocker arms in place, so I use the push rod and just pop them out like that and put them back in so I don't lose them. There you go. Now that you got those removed, you can easily access the bolts now. Okay, so after you move the four bolts holding the cylinder head onto the engine block, you should have exposed the piston. Now, what I usually do in this situation is I just check to make sure that the cylinder is clear and clean so when removing the piston it's not going to scrape and damage the rings or the, the skirts of it. And in this situation, as you can see, the ring of the cylinder is very clean. Actually, it's still a little lubricated. So, you should be good to go ahead and pull the piston out. Next, you go to take off the connecting rod to be able to pull the piston out. You can't do that though with the crank cover in the way, so you gotta take that off. Usually, in engines like this, there's eight or nine bolts, seven sixteenths holding that on. Uh, in this situation I already moved the five before I started filming so I'll just remove these three and show you guys how to get inside here. Just give me a sip. And with a little wiggling, it should come off like that. Well, that's actually a little rusty right there. Oh well. I guess the engine ain't being used anymore, anyways. Okay, so now they got the crank cover off, you should be able to see the connecting rod and uh, the bottom of your piston and the crankshaft and camshaft and tap pits and all that other good stuff so and this, we just need to get the piston out so you gotta move the camshaft out of the way it's, it's just as easy as pulling it out and the tap pits you just drop those down camshaft, tap pits they're still really lubricated and then what you want to do is rotate the engine so when you take those bolts out they can just easily come out and you won't hit any of that. Now in this engine you need a 5 sixteenths again to take out the connecting rod bolts and uh, I use this tool because it has both a quarter and 5 sixteenths which is usual uh, connecting rod bolt sizes I guess you could say these ones weren't in there too tight I guess 
then once you loosen them up, they should just freely spin out of there. There's one. And there's two. Now the the connecting rod should just easily pull off. That one's pretty warm. But there's your connecting rod. So now what you do is you rotate the crankshaft so the piston is all the way up at the top. Then you just use your fingers, I guess, and you pull it out or pop it out. And there you have it. There's your piston. Okay, so there's inside the bore, and there you guys want to see there, there's the uh, crankshaft. The crankshaft's actually kind of worn down, but the bore is actually in like mint condition. Look at that, man. That's nice. And there you have it. That's how you remove a piston from an engine, a small engine anyways. There's lots of parts involved, but it's fairly simple when you get the hang of it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, and I hope you guys learned something. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Peace.